So now that we have this expression for the multiplayer, we can just um, figure out what are the properties of the multiplayer. And um, three properties are particularly interesting. So this is a public employment multiplier. So what are those properties? Well, let's start with the simplest one. Simplest property is that the multiplier is positive which, you know, may be obvious, but, um, you know, not all multipliers are positive and there is always a debate about whether, you know, in various models, the multiplier are positive or zero or negative and stuff. But so, that's a question of interest. But here, clearly, the multiplier is always positive. What's the proof? Well, the proof is obvious. All the terms that are involved in the multiplier expression are positive, so obviously your multiplier is going to be positive. Um, so what's the interpretation? Well, the interpretation is that when you increase public employment, you're going to increase total employment. That's the interpretation. When public employment goes up, then total employment, which is public plus private, so um, total employment goes up, which also means that unemployment goes down. So if you're a, if you're a government, for instance, and you want to uh, say achieve full employment, that's your objective. Uh, so that means you want to bring unemployment to its efficient level. Well, public employment is a tool that allows you to do that because by increasing public employment, you can actually reduce unemployment you know, as much as you want. So in particular, you can just bring unemployment right to the uh, efficient level, the one that um, we studied earlier, the level that maximizes um, welfare. So, uh, you know, exactly like um, for instance, the US government did during the, uh, the New Deal, during the Great Depression. The government used public employment to try to tackle uh, the high level of unemployment that there was. And, and so that makes sense because indeed we've showed here that the multiplier is uh, positive. The graphical interpretation for that is just that when you increase um, public employment, Total employment goes up, which is exactly what we had seen on our little diagram uh, earlier. So um, all of this makes sense. So that's the first property. Second property. The second key property is that the multiplier is actually less than one. Ha! Huh. How do we see that? Well, it's clear the, the fraction is of the form one over one plus something that's positive. So clearly your um, numerator is one, but your denominator is bigger than one. So your multiplier has to be less than one. Okay. So what's the interpretation of that? Well, that means that total employment does not increase one for one with public employment. Or if you want, what we see, what that means is that total employment increases. You know when public employment goes up increases less than public employment. So that means that say if you add you know a thousand workers in the public sector, the total amount of workers who have a job is going to increase by less than a thousand workers. Okay. Or if you want, unemployment is going to decrease by, by less than a thousand workers. So total employment increases less than public employment. Or if you want, an, an alternative way to say that is that unemployment, the number of workers who are unemployed, 
decreases by less than public employment increases. Okay. So again, if you increase public employment by a thousand workers, unemployment will fall, but not by a thousand workers, by less than a thousand workers. And what is the reason? Well, the intuition for that, we've worked it out when we uh, looked at our labor market diagram uh, earlier. This is because um, there is crowding out of uh, private employment. This is because private employment is crowded out. What's the logic for that? So we said, you increase public employment, that's going to boost labor market tightness, um, you know, which is why unemployment falls. When you have a higher labor market tightness, it's harder for private firms to recruit. You know, they are facing competition from the public sector. It's harder to recruit, it's more costly to recruit, so private firms are going to cut down um, their size, they're going to reduce um, their size because um, employing workers is less profitable in this high tightness environment. Um, so basically what happens is that uh, when you increase, when public employment goes up, private employment actually goes down. Uh, such that total employment doesn't go up as much as public employment. Okay? Uh, so when public employment goes up, <coughs> private employment actually, actually goes down. So total employment, which is the sum, of course, of public and private employment, increases by less than public employment. Okay, uh, so that this this uh, idea that there is uh, the problem that we are facing here that the government is facing is crowding out. Because you know tightness goes up when G and public employment goes up, so it shows the response of tightness that the crowding out uh, occurs. So again, the mechanism is that when the government steps in and um, posts new vacancies to increase its size, it's going to make it more difficult for private firms to employ, and therefore private firms are going to employ fewer workers than they were before the uh, expansion of the public sector. So we have a positive multiplier, but the multiplier is always less than 1.